Hey guys, Alex Sessions here. Welcome to today's video. I recently had the pleasure of sitting down with Mike Lindup of Level 42. He has a brand new single out, which I'm very proud to be a part of, a small part of. If you'd like to listen to it, um, there's a link in the description below so you can get right to it. In this conversation, we discuss the process of recording it uh, through lockdown and how that felt. Uh, we also get into other topics. He talks about the special guests on the forthcoming album, uh, connecting with his fans, um, the process of writing with Level 42, his time on tour, working with Alan Holdsworth and his future plans. So I hope you'll enjoy it. Hey, Mike, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing really well, Alex. Good. Yes. Thanks for joining us. So you have a new album, out? Um, well, I have is a new single out, which is the first cool. single from the forthcoming new album. The new album uh -huh. will probably be ready around the end of the year. Yeah, this is kind of like, it's gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be delivering this in stages. A bit more of a kind of modern approach, perhaps. Uh, well, it's more to do with circumstances. I mean, I'm basically, I'm recording in London. I'm living in Scotland. Yeah. So it's kind of like a, a chunk of progress here and then a bit yeah. of hiatus and another chunk and so on. But I mean, this has been ongoing for like two years. You know, if the end result is worth it, then it doesn't matter if I take a bit more time to do it. Okay, well, perhaps uh, should I hit play and, and... Yeah. We'll have a little listen, shall we? Yes, I can't wait to see your reaction. <laughs> Wonderful track, Mike. Yeah, wow. Yeah, well, um, as I said from the beginning, I, I loved it when I first heard it. And uh, yeah, it's a real privilege to be a part of it. So thank you for asking. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic to have you on it. I mean, you know, it's like your your contribution is is just... It's just perfect. You know, it's just great that, you know, you kind of step through the door and you just yeah. you emote so beautifully. I mean, just, oh, the, thank the, you. you know, the not only the notes you use, but there's the, the sound you get and the kind of soaring nature. It just it just really mm. seems to suit the track. Oh, thank you. What I really, really love uh, about yourself and this particular project is you allow people to just be themselves. And the music, I think, breathes a lot freer when you allow someone just to bring themselves to the table i think so i mean that, that well the whole point of um you know asking somebody to to make a contribution is you want them to give of their best and also you know you don't want i mean it depends on the circumstances i mean yeah you know i mean we you know this this is something where i've created a track and i have no fixed idea about what the guitar might do i just know mm. i kind of know a sense of how you play and how you might play but mm. I was no way going to say, OK, well, I want you to play these notes here and so on, you know, mm. and um, and also the, and then you give the chance for the person to, to bring something, you know, that you'd never have thought of uh, uh, yeah. to the track. So that's, you know, that's that's what's really marvellous about throwing open to you. Plus the fact that we're in lockdown, you know, yeah. so it wasn't yeah. like, you know, originally the plan was for you to come to the studio because obviously yeah. I'd much rather and I know you'd in a way mm. much rather be in the room and do it and then mm -hmm. we can sort of fire back and things and oh yeah that was great you know can you do that again yeah. or whatever or something like that or take that and go on that avenue or run with this idea sure. um so it was just a question of um kind of saying okay well well here you go this is the feeling you know you can hear the lyrics so just sort of take the emotions and the direction you want to take it and of course you were generous enough to give us lots of different takes and uh you know and also you kind of gave me a bit of a preview so i was then able to say okay i think you can kind of let go a bit more yeah and... yeah absolutely time to let go um and actually that that was something i was just going to mention what was interesting on this occasion is so we did it virtually but my first uh approach was somewhat more laid back and then I find that quite interesting when you said, oh, yeah, no, I like what you did. Where you got to at the end, I want you to be like that a little bit more straight out the gate. And uh, I was like, really? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so that was lovely, you know. Yeah, you know, I mean, in in a sense, um, with a kind of old fashioned, you know, pop head on and, and so mm. on, you know, there the, 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 the was perhaps a you know, a feeling that that you want to end up with something kind of memorable or melodic or so on, um, you know, in, you know, solos in certain pops. And I mean, you know, like Boone solo in Something About You, for example, or Lessons yeah. in Love. Um, whereas with this, you know, what I was trying to capture was that whole kind of 
that busyness of our mm. lives and that kind of sort of freneticness and so therefore you kind of you know getting more jazzy and sort of you know really playing was was what i really liked um mm. and uh you know i felt that 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 kind of suited the track and it, it kind of wanted to be bold and adventurous and not and not kind of safe in that sense sure or, or stock as it were you know <laughs> um, you wouldn't do not... stock anyway alex no because you've worked with some tremendous guitar players over the years and, and some legendary ones um how important is the guitar to you you know is it an instrument you like you know i mean there's obviously sax piano there's loads of instruments but is it are you drawn to the sound of the guitar i am and i would say depends whether it's acoustic or electric i kind of have mm. a different take on it um obviously i've worked a lot with dominic miller and um yeah. i suppose in a sense um there is part of me that you know, there are certain songs I write where I almost hear it being written on guitar. Um, there's a song called Song of Zane on my On The One EP, for example, where you know, Chris Frank plays the guitar on that. And I really heard it as being a guitar bed. There's another yeah. track coming up on Changes 2 um, where Dominic's playing guitar and it's really much more guitar, acoustic guitar led. Because that's right, how lovely. I, even though I wrote it on the piano, I was writing it as if I was playing a guitar. It's kind of arpeggiated and so on. And yeah. that's, I suppose, a legacy of part of the influence of, of John McLaughlin and, and yep. uh, but also the kind of folk picking thing, you know, because it's, mm. it's perhaps the most sort of folky track on the album. But when it yeah. comes to electric guitar, then uh, it's a sort of, it's it's another ball game. And, and, and in terms of kind of, you know, soloing or blowing i mean like you say i've had the privilege of you know you know working with alan holsworth for example mm. who's you know an incredible soloist but you know there, there's there's many ways to skin a cat i don't know why i'm thinking of that analogy <laughs> in the that old phrase yes apologies to any viewers this is not very lover. facebook friendly. friendly i know <laughs> i uh i'm a big cat lover myself but i know what you mean well exactly i mean so you know there there isn't you know, there's not, you know, one style that, that, that rules yeah. them all, as it were. It depends really on the track and, and the vibe of the track. And and, mm. uh, uh, and it's great to work, you know, with people that I know and the people that know sure. me and play with me because there's a kind of relationship there that uh, yeah. uh, so that you've had a sense of kind of putting your head into my world, my musical world and sort of knowing kind of where I'm coming from. And and I think that's that's quite important, you know, rather than, than finding... I suppose in the old days, you know, you'd have to get a session guitarist in and, you know, back yeah. in the 50s and 60s and, you know, you got who you got and hopefully they were musical enough to adapt to your style and, and often some yeah. did. But then, you know, sometimes uh, there'd be a kind of a, a terms of reference gap. And I have had that too in sessions mm. with Level 42 where, where someone has come in and, and they've not because they're not a great player, but just they just they just don't have the same terms of reference so therefore it doesn't seem to mm. sort of fit yeah i don't know do you ever see i i find a fascinating documentary uh some years ago uh from steely dan about the asia album do you recall seeing anything about, anything I have, about that? I've, I've seen that yeah so they they would bring in guys and i believe they tried something like four or five chaps on that particular uh track and they and they revisit some of them and, and they said exactly what you said like these other guys were great but it just wasn't happening in the way that they'd envisioned they were all fantastic in their own right and then then the final guy just came in and just did it and they're like that's the one you know it just resonated in that way um and maybe they were lucky enough that they could just call up the larry carltons and whoever you know yeah, yeah. They, they got an amazing phone book um <laughs> yeah but it's just a fascinating topic isn't it and like you say i think when you, when you do know uh the people as you say i think that relationship counts for something as well there's a sensitivity about knowing each other and on this occasion it was lovely to for me like i said at the beginning um to be able to really express myself is is sort of in a way the highest honor to be able to to do that and put a piece of yourself um into the music and uh it was just lovely to do that yeah well, you know, it's 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 you know, it's a pleasure and a privilege and uh, um you know, it's a great opportunity for me obviously uh in the sense that I can you know, go into places that I obviously, you know, maybe wouldn't go with level 42. I mean, mm. I can't be objective. I mean, I know that there is, you know, some of the music on this album invariably inevitably is going to be, you know, compared with level 42. 
because right, yeah. I'm one of the writers of the band. So some of the mm. band sound, if you like, is my sound, if cool. you like. But on the other hand, you know, I get a chance to work with um, on on this album. I've got you know some bass players who are kind of you know some of a a younger generation than than Mark mm. and myself, and so it's kind of like you know that the people that might have been influenced by you know us and other bands that that were kind of around in the eighties, and then they're bringing that forward into their generation and so on, and so it's it's nice to sort of kind of hook up with the with the younger guys as well as um, you know because because Mark's you know also kind of make making appearance on the album and okay, Phil, cool. Phil is making an appearance on the album. And, uh, um, you know, but I've got, I've got some, some really, really good, you know, Dominic's on the album and, mm. uh, yeah, it's, it, there's some, there's some great musicians that are kind of on there, you know, that have their kind of, their, their place in the certain tracks where, where it yeah. suits them. Did you mention uh, that uh, it may be previewed, uh, potentially on radio before then? I'm hope I'm hoping that by the time this comes out, um, it, yep. it will have, uh, you know, had some previews on, on the radio so i mean yeah. it looks like it, it's it's been well received by you know a couple of djs and so, you know it will get get some some love and some play which which will be amazing because mm. you know i'm in this world now of you know it's being released on the digital platform so it's on spotify apple music deezer yep. amazon yep. um and uh you know, there's no record company as such. You know, I put it out on my own label, but I don't have a record yeah. company. And so in terms of reaching out to the world, what I've done is uh, gone directly to the fans. And, mm. uh, you know, I re-released a, a 30th anniversary vinyl edition of my first solo album, Changes, from 30 years ago, and sold a, a run of that uh, directly to the fans. And they were amazing. Great. Of course, in the process said, well, I'm, you know, some of the proceeds of the sales of these records are going to go into helping me get changes to done and and so mm. um you know they were kind of knowing that i'm working on on another album has has been great and letting them know that and uh so it's been really good to just just go direct and uh which is something yeah. that i've never done before that's great and actually on that note uh talking about some of your fans uh for anyone that doesn't know of course we have done a, a few gigs over the years and I, i've met some of your wonderful fans uh, and i uh, quite i think of them quite fondly there's some lovely people and, and quite loyal and uh, they've supported you at uh, a handful of gigs certainly that i was at and um yeah just wonderful pe fans of music good people and uh, that must feel nice to to have that support it's really it's really amazing and uh mm. i think i appreciate it more you know just because we've been you know in this pandemic and in this lockdown and, it, yeah. and it's been you know really tough in some ways and mm. to know that that support is there uh is you know one of the things that kind of you know bolsters me in in the yeah. sort, of, sort of times that when, when it's kind of difficult and you're thinking you know is this any good you know is this mm. ever going to come out you know will i ever get this done and um you know and and, and struggling at, at, at times but uh then having to sort of really apply myself and uh you know think of those great albums that i really admire um you know and you know stevie's stuff and uh mm. you know michael jackson stuff i know that you know he the man himself is kind of you know fallen out of favor because of you know personal stuff that he's done but i mean you know in terms of the musical legacy it's Musically, amazing yeah um absolutely and uh you know and i like i really you know still like albums i mean obviously i have favorite tracks from my favorite albums like most people mm -hmm. and uh but you know what i really admire are albums where you kind of want to put it on and you want to listen to the the whole thing and it's a kind of satisfying yep. journey you know some of Joni mitchell's albums and mm. you know steely dan fleetwood mac uh, stevie wonder and so on so you know what i hope is is that there will be you know different tracks that will attract different people in terms of you know what they like but as an as a whole the album will kind of sit together in, in a way that it seems that i managed to achieve with my first album from the lovely feedback that i've been getting after all these yeah. years yeah and i think it's interesting as you say in this day and age uh to have that uh that link to the fans is is wonderful but also kind of crucial i think these days more than ever isn't it um when you're on your own 
there's a there is that thing of like say oh is this good enough is it any good and that and you have to let go it is a process of letting go and allowing others not to judge as such but uh, to hope that they would enjoy it and interpret it in their own way and for us to not think of it just from ourselves too much i comfort myself with the thought that you know some of the most incredible successful songwriters you know have said that they struggle with you know self-doubt and um mm. you know self-belief and i think i yeah. i saw a mccartney quote where he said that you know he kind of oscillated between thinking you know this is brilliant and or well, this is terrible and you kind of go through that and when i've gone through yeah. that in the past you know recording and writing with level 42 of course it's a shared experience and so yeah if someone's kind of you can look around and saying you know are you digging this and they can say yeah mm. or i think it needs something else and and so on and you kind of share that whole journey and I, mm. I used to say that you know in the control room you know some we wouldn't always all be in the control room because sometimes you needed to get out and have a breather yes and sort of, you know take yourself away and you know get something to eat or you know play a game of pool or whatever and then come back into mm. the room and sort of get a, a new appreciation of it and uh you know so if someone was kind of lagging uh then someone else could sort of take over the momentum and, and vice versa mm. but when you're doing it on your own you're sort of trying to wear all the hats and uh, yes indeed it, it can it can it can be a challenge but um you know it's on the other hand uh if you've kind of got through the sort of difficult parts and you've you sort of got to the other side then it's a very very rewarding feeling indeed yeah i can relate to you more at working uh, as a sort of a, a sole trader <laughs> or a, or a sort of solo person um and it's been during this year it's actually given me the forethought to say you know what i really can't wait to start working with people for real or you know in yeah, in, the, in room. the room and so uh, as things are gradually easing, that's certainly a personal thing that I'm looking forward to doing. And I've got certain people in mind for projects and I'm looking forward to collaborating for the exact reason that you said, actually, predominantly more so that you can get that feedback from the musicians you're working with and uh, and not necessarily be too in your own mind Um and actually, just quickly on that note, uh, I recently saw uh, some clips, uh, some wonderful uh, footage uh, from the memorial of uh, dear Alan Holdsworth. And some of his musicians were talking yet again about how he also allowed everyone just to be themselves. And, and where whether that be Gary Husband or uh, uh, Chad Wackerman or, or Jimmy Johnson, he would say, these are the chords do whatever <laughs> there was not a groove or anything you know and 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 that that small statement just confirmed so much and i thought wow you know because i'm often writing uh little musical ideas and things and i'm trying to come up with the drums wear all the hats a bit of bass here a bit of keys and therefore i i do believe my music you know can sound quite similar so i've realized that's definitely certainly something that I'm looking forward to doing, working with others to, to bring the, that life to it. Yeah. 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 So important. It is. It, it, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's been amazing. I, I, I've said, um, that I've often thought of myself as a loner in the sense mm. that, you know, on the tour, I'd often be the one that kind of goes off wandering, you know, with my camera mostly, right? Um, you know, into whatever town we're in and, uh, you know, quite happy with my own company and just uh, observing and, um, you know, I'm not the sort of party animal, you know, when we're on the tour bus, you know, after a gig and you're kind of yeah. winding down and, you know, a lot of times, you know, the other guys would be in the lounge sort of, you know, having a few drinks, you know, watching a mm -hmm. film or sort of bantering or you know playing the favorite tracks with each other and i'd be the one that's kind of you know in bed going oh could you could you just be quiet i need to rest my voice, you know? <laughs> oh and, yeah uh, yeah especially especially this time and i'm I, and i'm sort of thinking back to it, thinking god i might have actually been missing out in in my mm. you know i mean it's a it's a it, obviously it's a good idea to approach a tour like it's a, a marathon event and you need to sort mm. of make sure that you're at your best on stage but on the other hand i could probably just chill a bit you know and mm. uh, and and i really want to do that you know i've realized that 
yes, I happy to be alone if it's by choice, but when it's enforced, it's a whole yeah. different ball game. And thinking now okay. how much I miss the other guys, and you know, we're, mm. we're saying uh, with some of the guys from you know Dominic's band as well, Nico, the bass player, um, who's also on the album on the track, and said to him, you know, it's kind of like oh, to be stuck in an airport lounge somewhere with, you know, <laughs> three hours to wait because yeah. you know the connection is delayed, and you know how we used to grumble so much and you know sit at the oh, bar, yeah. and it, well, it'd be just amazing to just be able to, you know, talk and catch up and you know, mm. treasure the time that we have rather than Amazing. wishing it away. Amazing. Well, you know, that's, uh, yeah, perhaps a nice sort of note to end on, just a, a reflective time that we've had. And it's great that we've been able to uh, make music, but also perhaps uh, gain some perspective on our own lives so that we can live it to the full as we come out of this. And yeah, maybe certain things that we did take for granted, we can embrace more and enjoy. I, I'm ready. I, I'm at the starting blocks. I just want to go. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to, well, seeing yourself, uh, you know, and uh, doing living life, I suppose, you know, and just doing things. So um, on that note, do you, do you have any shows sort of creeping in? Have you got plans uh, towards the end of the year? Um, yeah, well, with Level 42, we have... Um... You know, 2020 was our 40th anniversary year, so we had uh, lots yeah. of uh, plans and lots of gigs, mm. which, you know, never happened, of course. Um, and some have been postponed. So our sort of 40th anniversary UK European tour from last October, November has been postponed to this year, October, November. And once, once the government announced the roadmap um, a, a couple of months ago the promoter said yeah it's definitely going to be on so uh, Fantastic. looking forward to that Got um, it's preceded by two or three festivals at the end of July uh, which will be mm. our first gigs since the beginning of November 2019 because we were just about to go and do a, sh uh, a show with the BBC Philharmonic doing orchestrated versions of our songs at the Palladium oh, really? on the 16th Why? of March and then the 15th it got oh. cancelled because someone got COVID and, and that was that. Oh. So, oh, what a shame. So that, yeah, that, that will be kind of like the first gig so I'm really looking, obviously looking forward to that. You know, yeah. It'll be amazing to be on stage, it'll be amazing to be in front of an audience again and uh, to be in that atmosphere. Um, yeah, and hopefully doing some, some shows with Dominic. Uh, mm. You know, again, his, he, he had everything kind of went on hold for him same with sting and yeah. so on sure. uh, but uh i hope to be doing some shows with him at some point and uh i don't i'd like to i'm starting to think about maybe doing you know some of the songs from changes to live mm. um i'm not in any 